Good evening everyone, it is Miss Aves here. Welcome to Raise and Achieve an Evening. It's really lovely to be able to talk to you all today and finally kind of formally introduce myself to you all so you can put a face to the name. So I'm Miss Aves and I'm obviously taking over from Mrs Rowe and um, she's gone to have her baby. So I'm taking on year 10 as well as year 11, which then means that I will take the current year 10s into year 11 next year. So I'm kind of getting a, a term head start with them and getting to know them and yourselves really well so we can have a really successful year. So the first thing that I'm going to talk to you about is the mock examination process. Um, so why do we have mocks at Ormiston Victory? So there are really two reasons. So the first thing I would say is that mocks can be quite scary and daunting, but they really need to be viewed by parents and by students as a supportive measure. So they are there to help you all feel prepared for year 11. If we left it until year 11 and you go into the sports hall for the first time, it's quite a daunting experience. Whereas if you've had that preparation and had that practice run, then it definitely feels less intimidating. So that is the first reason. I would say that mocks this year are even more important for the current year 10s because they didn't get the chance to do year nine mocks because we were obviously in lockdown. It's really essential for ensuring that students are familiar with the process. So things like where they need to register, where they need to sit, where they need to put their bags, what they do with their phones, the equipment that they have on the desks. Um, obviously exams can be quite scary, but this just gives them a chance to feel a little bit more comfortable with the routine. The other thing is it really helps teachers inform their planning. So after these mocks are done, we've then got a marking period for teachers. And then there's a week right at the end where teachers can go through all of these papers in class with students and really let students know where they maybe haven't got things 100% right and where they can improve. Teachers can also see, especially bearing in mind that we've had two lockdowns and there are going to be gaps in students' knowledge, teachers can then go through and see what topics maybe haven't been covered well and then can readdress those things in year 11 to inform their planning. There are also things such as exam access, if students require extra support, such as a reader or a scribe, that we get the students to obviously practice this time around to make sure that those arrangements are 100% and the right thing for your child. Some students will struggle with the mock process as well. It is quite an anxious time for lots of students, so it's also a really good opportunity for us to identify students who might need that little bit more extra support so we can find ways to best help them. And it might be that they need to do a revision timetable or it might be that they need to do some mindfulness with Mr Dos Santos. But based on the mocks, we can then put all of those things in place. What we really don't want is for students to be worried about the mocks. We do want them to take them seriously, but we do know that obviously you have had two lockdowns and um, which have quite significantly affected your schooling. As such, as Mr Duncan has mentioned as well, there are going to be some modified papers. So students won't be assessed on things that they haven't been taught and they won't be uh, unfairly penalised because of the lockdowns. What students really need to do, as I've said, is use it as a supportive measure and use the mock to then inform their revision. So that could be a little bit of revision over the summer or their revision for September going forward. But it's really important that they use this as an opportunity so they can see how to improve and how to further develop their grades. All of the mocks will take place in the sports hall. There are a couple, for example, listening exams in MFL that do take place in a separate classroom, but students will get all of this information on their timetables. All of the exams are taken within a two week period. So that will be the 7th of June to the 18th of June. So the first two weeks after May half term. And the good thing about mocks is, and where they're very different to real exams, is that students will obviously get their papers back so they can look at them and see how to improve for them their real examinations. The other way in which mocks are slightly different is we do fit the mocks into a two week period, whereas normally the exam window in the summer when your students in year 11 uh, is normally a little bit longer. So that does mean that there'll be a period one and two window, a period three and four window, and then a period five window. There aren't many period five um, mocks at all, so it shouldn't affect many students. Um, but some of the year 11s did find this quite stressful. But when you do come to do your real exams, the most exams you can have in a day is limited to two. So if you do, for example, have a period five exam as well, please do not worry, that wouldn't happen um, in, in the real exam window next year. Before each morning exam, we offer a breakfast revision session. So this is a really focused session with a calm environment um, just for you to do some last minute revision and also to get exam advice from your teacher. So typically subject teachers, heads of department will be around walking around the tables in the canteen to support you and give you those last minute tips and techniques.
There is also then a booster session before exams, which is a 20 minute targeted session with your teacher or with a subject specialist where they address common mistakes that people might make. For example, in science, they'll remind you key terminology to use um, and also to go over exam techniques. Now, what I would say, my word of advice from obviously having done this before with a different year group is that the booster and breakfast session isn't enough. I'm sure you're all sat there at home thinking it's a really good extra opportunity. And that is definitely how it needs to be viewed. The booster and the breakfast sadly do not replace having to do preparation at home the night before and in the kind of week run up to the exam. And um, it is very much exam technique tips, advice on what language to use, advice on how many minutes to spend per question. For example, in history, it's really clear cut. If it's a four mark question, you spend this amount of time on it. So I would definitely suggest that revision needs to be done in addition to that, um, just to make sure everyone is clear about what the boosters are for. It's very much exam technique and last minute tips and tricks. As part of this evening, you will get your exam timetable. We will give you an official copy as well, but this means that you can start preparing now. There is never a, the right time to start revising. There's always something else that you could do. And we're obviously gonna work with you this half term on that and how to prioritize revision while still having kind of a social life and having that balance. But it is definitely not too early to start revising. Parents, it is gonna take a lot of support, obviously with lockdown and things, students haven't necessarily develop those good habits yet. So it is gonna be a process and we will all work together, obviously, to help you with that. What that does mean is that some students are already in period sixes. That isn't revision. Again, that is to go over things, um, things from lockdown and where students just need the extra support. So I would suggest that if you don't know where to start, I'm going to explain what the booklet, um, the revision booklet is, which will really help you. Later in the term, we'll also um, introduce a revision challenge, which again will really, really guide you. But the first thing I would say is if you've not got your order form in yet for your revision guides, that you get that done as soon as possible. You can email me, email Miss Cork, and we can help you with that. So that is a really good first place to start if you don't know how to get prepared. OK, so as I just mentioned, we are going to be issuing a revision guidance booklet to all students and you will all get these as a physical hard copy tomorrow in your PSHE in the first 20 minutes. We're going to bring those round and answer any questions. So we provide this with you as a supportive measure. Um, it contains all of the info that you need about your mock exams. So on each page, you've got the date of each exam. So you've got it on the timetable and then on the specific page. It's also got top tips from your teacher, key websites and a subject revision video. So you're getting that really specialist information from your teachers specifically. So firstly, how to use your booklet. So when you open it, you will see that there are two exam timetables, each for the two different weeks. So as you can see on the screen now, you've got mock exams week one, which is the 7th of June to the 11th of June. So when you get this tomorrow morning, the first thing that I suggest you do is highlight your exam dates and pop it in your diary. All of you won't all of you will do core exams to English, Maths and Science. Not all of you will have the different options. So, for example, we can see the very first exam is MFL C block Spanish listening. So that is only for students who do Spanish and who do it in C block. So if you're in my class, for example, that's A block, so you won't highlight that one. If you don't have an exam at a certain time, then you just go to your normal lesson. The next thing you need to do is go through the revision techniques and start to try out the different methods. So in this book, but there are six different revision techniques or resources that we recommend. And I, as I've said, it's never too early to revise. So I would start now trying them out for different subjects and to see what works for you. And we are obviously on the study skills morning, which I'll talk about a little bit later. We're going to go into a lot more detail with these and really give you guys some more advice on how to revise. Thirdly, we have given you a revision timetable template in case we've got any keen beans in the year group, which I'm sure we have, who want to start doing their own timetable and really start to plan out what their revision looks like. But again, you'll have a chance to do this later this half term at the study skills session. So for now, this one is optional, but it's there just in case you do want to get a head start. And then you have got lots and lots of pages that look like this. So these are the subject specific pages and there are one per subject. Again, not all of you do every subject. So what you might want to do is put a little post-it note or paper clip on the lessons that you do do um, so you can refer to those really easily. So in terms of the page layout, you have got the exam date and time. 
you have got the red box with what you're going to be assessed on. Now, this is really important. For example, we can see in English literature, you're doing paper one, section B. That means that you're not doing section A. So this is when I talked about teachers doing modified papers based on lockdown. So that means that the, the English heads of department have sat down and said, actually, that wouldn't be fair. So we're just going to do section B. So that really tells you what you can focus your revision on. You've then got the green box with where you can get help. You have then got four QR codes in the more bright blue colour, which take you to the full specifications that will list every single thing that you're going to be assessed on an advice video from your teachers, a link then for Spark Notes, which is one of the recommended revision tools. And lastly, a QR code for Mr. Bruff YouTube, which again is something that the English department recommend. So the reason we've done QR codes is from being head of year 11, I have seen firsthand that students want to do things the easiest way possible and definitely prefer to use mobile phones. I have to say I'm with you on that one. I use my phone for absolutely everything. This means when you've got your booklet in front of you tomorrow, all you need to do is get your camera open, scan the code, a little bit like when you do the COVID tests, scan the code and it will take you directly to these websites. So there's no excuses for cutting and pasting or links being too long. All you need to do is scan a code. This is something that we've introduced this year just to try and make the process that little bit easier for you all. At the bottom in the darker blue colour, you've then got exam information. So you can see exactly what you have to do, how many minutes it is, how many marks it is, and then a revision checklist. So these are things that you can physically go through, tick off, add to your timetable and make sure that you've done in preparation. And then just as a reminder at the bottom, you've got key email addresses. This bit is more for parents. I know sometimes it's really hard to know who to contact in such a big school, but there you've got the specific email addresses of people who can help. So they are what your revision pages look like. So as I've said, I would go through, earmark the ones that are gonna be relevant to you. So the options that you study, have a read of those, watch all of the videos and make sure that you understand exactly what your mocks are going to be about. So some of you might be sat there thinking, why are we giving you all of this information? I know it is a lot to take in and that's why we've done it as a booklet. So it's a resource that you can constantly come back to. So I definitely suggest students tomorrow, you will get given these in PSHE and you'll be given 20 minutes to go through, highlight your key exams. So I do suggest packing a highlighter tonight if you can. And then having 20 minutes, if you've got a mobile phone to have a look at some of the videos and really get to grips with those. But I suggest over the weekend as a family that you sit down together, look at the key mock dates. If you've got a calendar on the wall or if you have a family kind of iCloud calendar or anything like that, I would definitely add them in so everyone at home knows exactly what is going on. As I've said, mocks can be a stressful time, so it's really good if everyone understands um, when they're taking place. I would then suggest having a look at what mocks first and starting to map out some revision using the timetable that we've popped in here as a template. What I really don't want is for anyone to be worried by this booklet. We've given it to you now so you can get started early. I think it's fair to say from my experience that lots of year 11s, especially in the year nine mocks, they didn't have year 10 ones, buried their head in the sand a little bit and kind of said, well, I'm not, I'm not year 11 yet. I'll start in year 11. But you guys will realise when you get to September, you don't really have a full year. It's more like eight months. So it is so important that you get started now and that you feel prepared. As your head of year, the last thing I want is for someone to walk into a mock, sit down and think, oh my goodness, I don't know what I'm doing. It's really important that you know what exams you're doing, when they are and what you're going to be assessed on. That is the best way that you can prepare yourselves. This should also help you kind of prioritise what subjects. So, for example, week one subjects might take priority first with then some revision for week two mocks in week one. So it's those types of things where this will really come in helpful. As always, you just need to ask if you need support. We've got people like Miss Challen, Miss Kobe, Miss Cork, who are going to be introduced to you in a letter in a few weeks more formally, but they are here now to help you guys. So if you don't know where to start with your booklet, if you want one of us to sit with you and highlight it together, then we can absolutely do that. You just need to come and speak to one of us. Obviously, me and Miss Woodcock are in the same office together now. So just pop along and ask for some help if you need it. And parents, that definitely goes for you as well. If you need one of us to ring and speak you through the booklet and the timetable, we can absolutely do that. 
I will just add at this point as well that teachers will still be setting homework for students as they feel appropriate and necessary. So revision doesn't replace homework. Um, as per the homework policy, which I know was sent home a while back, there should be an hour of homework set per week per subject. So revision is then in addition to that. The last thing that I'm going to really talk about is the revision challenge, which is going to be launched as part of the study skills day later this half term. But parents, I just want to let you know about this now. So we started this last year just before we went into lockdown and feedback initially from parents was really good. A lot of students in year nine and year 10 often say to parents, I don't need to revise, I've done it all. And I've already heard just since taking over um, last Monday that a couple of students in the year group have tried to use that as an excuse. And we know for parents, it's a while since some of you have been at school, things have changed drastically with exams and you don't necessarily know what your child should be revising. So what we've done is designed this booklet um, with bronze, silver and gold tasks in per subject to really guide your child through revision. So, for example, for MFL, my subject, um, so it's what I'm going to go through today. So your bronze task, for example, would be to create a vocab map with commonly used role play fit phrases and picture based task sentence starters. So that means a child needs to sit down, blank piece of paper and create a vocab map. So that's something that as a parent, you can say, OK, I can see you've got Spanish tomorrow. Have you done the bronze task? And it just gives parents a really easy way to suggest revision tasks without kind of having to do the thinking for yourselves. So it's just a heads up for students that this is coming your way. And for parents that after the 30th of April, students will each have a copy of these. And there is obviously a reward attached. Um, so there's three visas, five visas and 10 visas, dependent on the level completed. So this will also really support your child's revision and hopefully help you support them. So there is a lot going on. I know I've given you a lot of information today, but in terms of what happens next, here are some key dates. So students, tomorrow you'll be given a hard copy of your booklet and have 20 minutes to explore the QR codes for your options. That isn't by any means going to be enough time. As I've said, you definitely need to sit down as a family and look at those together. Just so you all know, English, maths and science videos, they will automatically play after this as the core subjects that everyone will study. So we would appreciate you giving up the time this evening to watch those. Staff have put effort, obviously, and time into doing the videos. So it'd be great if you can all watch those this evening, um, after dinner, kind of whenever works best for you. And then once you've got the booklet, explore those option videos together. There are some period sixes that have already started for targeted groups of students. And I have to say, I've been so impressed already with the levels of attendance and participation in those. So if you're in one of those period sixes, a huge well done to you. And thank you to parents who are supporting with those so far as well. In terms of progress support, um, I did send out an announcement on Tuesday. So there is the option to self-refer on Wednesdays in ICT 1 or 2. So that's for those students who maybe want to use a computer room with a teacher there. They can do whatever subject they want to, but it's an hour of time where I'll be there and they can ask me for help, where to start with revision, things like that. So I would definitely suggest um, if you've not got a Wednesday period six that you do come to that, you can simply just turn up. Um, I'll give you a seat so you can get logged on and then give you some visas obviously for giving up an hour of your time. Progress support, obviously, there are teacher referrals still, so it's working slightly differently this half term. Core subjects, so English, Maths and Science will refer students for weeks one to three. For example, Maths was this week. And then option subjects in weeks four to seven, as well as the normal reasons. So students who are behind with coursework or students who are failing to submit homework consistently. There is then the study skills morning, as I've said a couple of times throughout this video on the 30th of April. So that will be a two hour session um, with the year group split into two halves, half being with a motivational speaker, someone from outside school. So it's not listening to me. It's not listening to Mr. Duncan. It is someone completely different who's coming in specifically trained to give you guys advice. And then also with in the second hour with Mr. Cole to really look at revision techniques, revision timetables, and make sure you guys are fully prepared to start your revision. We will then have a mock assembly where we go over all of the expectations again on the 24th of May or the week commencing the 24th of May. And that is the last week before half term. So it is really the perfect opportunity before half term for you to then go away. So to come back on Monday the 7th, totally prepared. Next week, we'll start handing out mock timetables properly. So these will obviously have the dates, the rooms, seat numbers on as well. 
And then just so you all know, in summer two, period sixes will officially start for the last four weeks of term. So after all the mocks are finished, we won't do period sixes during the mock period. Um, that would just be mean. So from the 21st of June, period sixes will officially start as if you were in year 11. So they will be a Monday to Thursday. And then the celebration assembly, as Mr. Duncan said, celebration is the third step of his four point plan. So the celebration assembly will take place on the 9th of July, which is a Friday. It will take place during period five. That's when you'll get the envelope. You'll be able to open your mock results, hopefully celebrate for most of you. And if not, it's an opportunity to reflect and think about coming back in September, what you're going to change and what you might do slightly differently. I really hope that this evening has been helpful as I've put on the class charts announcement and as um, the links will be on this video as well, that there are two Zoom calls running. So myself and Mr. Duncan, we're each doing one. So if you want to pop in, we'll invite parents from the waiting room one at a time. If you've got any questions, um, we will both be there from half four until six, depending on when you're watching this. If one of us keeps you waiting too long, just try the other link. And um, that's why we've set up two. So hopefully we can get through, through all nice and quickly. We're also going to send out a Google form um, as a questionnaire. If if you've got any questions please just pop on the bottom that you'd like someone to contact you and we will endeavor to do that as soon as possible thank you so much for your time and thank you for your support year 11 and the transition from year 10 into year 11 it is a really busy time but it's also really key for students feeling successful for next year so i'm really looking forward to get started thank you